So two-dimensional graphics are divided into two main uh, areas. It's raster and vector. And what's the difference? I will start from uh, very familiar to you things, just uh, attaching in Photoshop. And the first thing that I would like to reveal according to uh, two-dimensional graphics is just uh, this very fashion and, and sleek images of top models. For example, uh, you could see original photos on this uh, um, from the right side and uh, from the left side, it's just detached whole images. And uh, the main principle that you can replace each pixels, each area of pixels, from the area that you don't like, like these molds or these uh, very massive hairs, you can just put one, of, uh, one uh, area of pixels from the good uh, side and replace it according to uh, an image you would like to have. And in most cases, it looks like, uh, like this. First of all, you need to outline the area that you would like uh, to insert from one, one part to another. Then you uh, select, select these with uh, blurred uh, areas and then place on the, uh, another image. Like this, we have rock with moss. With moss. And uh, the second very important part of Photoshop and operating the pixel images, it is blending. We could blend uh, two different layers, two, uh, like this, for example, this portrait is uh, blended with another uh, part of uh, texture. So that we have this blended result, some cracked old portrait. Uh, can I just pause for a minute? Yeah. I think the brightness is a bit more, so I can reduce the brightness and uh -huh. yes. see the... Uh, nose, yes? Uh, first of all, it's just a shape. 
shape uh, that described in elements of lines and, uh, and points. But uh, each point of this shape has each, each, each outline color. So the, um, the color differences between two uh, neighboring uh, points, they are very blurred and, uh, and you have very high quality of uh, gradient. So, what about 3D graphics? Actually, it's just, just imitation. You uh, have your screen, but at the same time, imitation uh, is concerned about uh, all these uh, 3D, uh, digital 3D space uh, that contains each element, and you can rotate your elements inside it. So, uh, the main branches of three-dimensional graphics is just uh, spline modeling, Polygon modeling, digital sculpting, 3D scanning, and little bit known uh, visual elements like simulation. But when uh, some engineers would like to simulate some law of physics uh, in digital space and particle systems, we would like to uh, review this very impressive part. It's polygonal modeling and digital sculpting. So, first of all, uh, the primitives, the basics in this digital space is just polygons. What does it mean? For example, uh, polygon in virtual space is just solid, like a uh, straight solid plate that has uh, main uh, operands like edges, like vertex and faces. Uh, the, the polygon itself is just solid, but in the uh, places where two neighboring uh, polygons connected, you can model this. For example, you can move every uh, vertex like this, for example. You can move it in three-dimensional space. You can extrude one uh, edge uh, from one place to another. So you could uh, construct just everything. Like on this picture, just primitives. And uh, on this part of the picture, you could see uh, uh, some somehow complicated form. And for example, probably it's hard to believe, but uh, this picture, this portrait, high details, and as well as these, and it's just a uh, 3D modeling process. And I will describe you how it's usually made. For example, you can see that uh, the, whole, uh, the whole form, it contains so small, tiny polygons, just in a uh, very organized according to physical shapes of body. And how does it usually make? I wanted to give you some clue about this by this short uh, 40 seconds long video. Oh, no? Excuse me? So, it's just a three dimensional virtual space. You have this polygon. It has just several vertexes and you can move this. But not only two-dimensional space like this, but actually, we will turn to another side. I will show you how. So just edit your shapes. Just remove uh, polygons that doesn't need to be in that place and uh, scaling, replacing, uh, editing some new vertexes or edges and so you will assign your uh, form to desirable results. It's just uh, the part of I, of I, just links. Yes, you have these symmetrical models. It's operating and it's, you, you can do this manually. You do this, uh, you have some clue of the process. You do, you edit every, uh, every part of this uh, manually. Uh, the, second, the second part of the whole process, a process, is texture. So what does it mean? For example, texture is the same, it's just imitation of the character of uh, this raw face that you can produce digitally. For example, so you have your solid surface, 
uh, yes, uh, modeling by polygons. And then you need to apply uh, some uh, effect of scheme, natural scheme. So what uh, should you do? You need uh, to make uh, some projection of the image that uh, then you will apply to the uh, three-dimensional uh, form. And uh, you can do this in uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, edit tools, like in Photoshop. For example, this is original photos, and this is just uh, flattened uh, sh shape and flattened texture of the people face. So the second, the second part is just applying this. For example, it's like uh, the elastic, uh, elastic uh, wallpapers, but uh, that could be stretched on absolutely different uh, form, like humans face. So you apply this, but at the same time, in order to make it more prominent, to give you a more prominent example, I would like to describe these uh, tools, uh, the name of this is material, uh, with a little bit different uh, example. We will return to this uh, beauty uh, woman a little bit later, but for example, uh, the main operands in these materials is just uh, visual, visual maps. And like colors, like uh, the visual structure of uh, your materials will be this map. For example, this uh, material of strawberry. So you have this like color, but at the same time you need to get some relief uh, and bump to your material. And for example, uh, we need some uh, this map. It's all almost all the time it is black and white image. Uh, where uh, the most the darkest areas, uh, they uh, depict the more, uh, how to say, deeper, deeper yes, the, mo the most deeper uh, parts of the uh, your shape material, and uh, the most prominent are gray scale or probably white. So at the same time, we need a material that reflects uh, in most natural ways, and uh, have some glossy and shades. At the same time. We have this mathematically cons uh, constructed settings adjustment. For example, uh, this is the settings for material. It has uh, reflection. You can adjust this according physical laws. And so you have also some slots for glossiness, for um, uh, for opacity in case of probably gloss materials like uh, glossy and transparent like glass. You can adjust the material that it will be transparent. So, uh, returning to women, yes, uh, we create another part of maps for eyeballs. Yes, in Photoshop, you just draw this uh, iris color texture. You have this flat map, and then you assign this uh, bitmap image to your elements to eyeball and you adjust this according uh, according sphere <coughs> shape and um, another part it's light sources uh, to make uh, your image much more naturally look like you need some sources of light that is why in these uh, digital spaces uh, Scientists created uh, special tools like light and uh, sources. So probably it, it's not uh, not a good quality to depict this effect, but uh, in good resolution we could see the small, uh, tiny hairs on uh, a woman's face. So and you also could create this by another map that I describe you displacement. For example, in uh, these cases, it somehow um, operated with a surface. So you could uh, you could achieve very photorealistic effects like this. It just uh, then just the results of the whole process. But uh, at the same time, you could just draw everything that you could imagine, like this food, and also you could see this uh, wireframe. A polygonal uh, polygonal um, image of, of whole sets of uh, objects. 
So this is photorealistic effect. But when you have materials, well, when you have shapes, objects, and all ge geometry in your scene, uh, three-dimensional three scene, you need uh, a special tools that will combine all those elements in order to produce this photorealistic image. And uh, for three-dimensional graphics, this process is named as rendering. A rendering is a whole mathematical complicated uh, instrument that combines each um, features and each uh, geometry in whole projection. For example, you have a three-dimensional space, yes? But uh, when you would like uh, to make some outcome, like image, I like this. For example, you adjust the settings and then um, the outcome of the whole calculation processes will be a two-dimensional image, like this. So you, you can use three-dimensional space uh, like um, source for, uh, for getting uh, different points of view of your uh, whole scene. And for example, it's another example of uh, three-dimensional uh, work. This is crown. And it also was produced in uh, software that I would describe. So you could see, first of all, it was it a was, uh, polygon model, uh, very primi primitive, but then after elaborating and working with uh, polygonal uh, mesh, you could, you could uh, achieve this result. For example, do you see uh, this set that just catch uh, gemstone? And this is the process and evolution of its making. Yes, from rough model to more detailed and more smooth. Uh, and uh, the whole three-dimensional space looks like this. It's just your object and these elements, if, uh, this is um, sources of light. So uh, if, if you would be a, um, a three-dimensional artist, you would work with these spaces. So at the same time, uh, in, in uh, this um, technique, you could produce also very complicated uh, photorealistic images like this architectural modeling. For example, this is a polygonal uh, modeling of this uh, house. And uh, the rendering process itself, it just looks like this. And so this is a workspace of your software. Uh, here you could see uh, the parts of uh, 3D scene. You could see this polygonal mesh and uh, light sources. Then you could see some adjustments and settings. Uh, so you could regulate uh, the <coughs> intensity of your light sources. And after, uh, after just pushing uh, the rendering process, you will have uh, this high resolution and very detailed picture that looks like photo. So, but at the same time, in the in three-dimensional um, technology, we have a little bit different tools to produce shapes. For example, uh, if much more closer to a real world uh, working of artists and clay. Uh, in this case, you don't need to adjust your polygons uh, manually. You don't need to work uh, by your hands doing each polygon from one to another. You just need to have a sense of artistic uh, taste. So this high quality image was produced in this evolutional process. So from a rough model, from a rough uh, whole body, elaborating each element, with some special tools. We have, in uh, terms of digital design, it calls as uh, brushes. We need just uh, to trace, uh, to, um, to touch uh, among the surface with uh, these tools, and it will produce some special relief, like you could see on this picture. So uh, this me me metaphor of this process, like this sculpture with their tools and with clay. I will give you a hint about this. It's but and uh, just one important point about this. Uh, 
In uh, this method of uh, three-dimensional graphics, it could be produced very high detailed uh, pictures like this. Because you just apply brushes and modify your surface. I will give you a short video that will describe this process. Welcome to HCGI. So look at this. Start with a sphere and use tools like that. This is the rough form that you operated. You just apply and uh, this tool form and you can just modulate the modeling so you, you don't and see so any polygons and any operations with these polygons, just uh, a bunch of uh, special uh, forms of these brushes. In the third part, I'll show so you collaborate details, the different brushes are responsible for different effects. For example, like this, it's responsible for this very sharp uh, cutting of forms. But not too refined. You can produce very, uh, very smooth uh, shapes. So like this. For this tool, you just uh, you work in the most natural way. So you can see the result. This is uh, actually the technology that um, allows to produce very complicated scenes and uh, movies like very uh, renowned Hollywood movies like Avatar or probably something like that. So uh, co uh, combining uh, different tools and different the method you could just elaborate every kind of complexity images like this. For example, each character was produced in a uh, separate uh, three-dimensional scene, and also you could see these uh, <coughs> solid objects. You could see here uh, artef artifacts and uh, characters as well. So what about animation? Animation, yeah, this is the art of uh, producing some movement. And uh, for the 3D space, for example, for animation, you need to have an uh, object, a uh, three-dimensional surface, and uh, you also have another tool how to make it movable. For example, uh, the first method is called skeletal animation. Uh, you have some rigid skeleton inside the body of your uh, Mm, of the object that you draw. And uh, then, by moving each of uh, these skeleton bones, you just move the whole body. And another technology uh, that produces such effects uh, called mo motion capture. So each point of the object is responsible for some particular, particular uh, groups of muscles on the body of the Mm, uh, this 3, uh, 3D man. So you could see you just move the points and you produce very natural and very different kinds of emotions and yes, like this. But uh, in order to make this process more smoothly and uh, more naturally, people just assigned for this technology this motion capture. Uh, capturing process. So, uh, first of all, people wear these suits with uh, these, uh, a lot of numbers of um, sensors and people just move and according to each uh, sensor on his body, there are also uh, different uh, points on the body of the model and they just reproduce these movements. So this is actually uh, the common way of creating this action movies like that. For example, it's just uh, acting of actors. Here we could see one uh, screenshot of uh, three-dimensional scene of this film. You could see all this polygonal uh, mesh and all these sensors that uh, catch the movement of actors. This is just some uh, some phase of uh, production and this is the end of the result. And also video produced in three-dimensional scene could be edited by special tools for movie. 
for motion uh, files. It's also the same as Photoshop for static images, but in case of key frames. Key frames are the key uh, frames and of the movie. So, uh, at the same time, I just uh, showed you most classical ways of uh, three-dimensional graphics, but also I uh, have generative graphics. What does it mean? Uh, for example, in previous time, just a first question to you, uh, do you know what's, what's uh, the shape, what is uh, the pattern of this view? Do you know? What is the triangle, the serpent is thinking? Yes, but it's repeated so many yeah, times. It repeated itself? Mm. It's fractal. Yeah. Oh, fractal. It's fractal. Yeah, yeah. And this is also three dimensional fractals. It's extremely complicated shapes. But all of them just describe with this very simple formula. So, generative art, uh, this is uh, the art that uses instead of a uh, graphical interface that use these coding windows. For example, if you need to uh, achieve some visual effect, you need to code this first. So, it just looks like this. You work with uh, formulas and with symbols. You don't work with all these buttons, brushes, and blending effects. And now, you just have very complicated and automatically meshed process like this. So you could achieve these graphics. You, you could achieve this uh, type of uh, graphics uh, manually, but uh, it's just absolutely a different generation of graphic uh, design. And for example, you could also apply these methods of modeling something really complex structure uh, for three-dimensional spaces, like here. And also the uh, author of this uh, architectural pylons uh, he uh, just worked on uh, script, just worked on processing and coding of these shapes. And uh, that you could see just the result of his work. So it's another, another point of view, these very complicated structures. So you, you don't see, in previous time it was very, very difficult to achieve something like that. But nowadays it's just the next stage of development, digital design. You could also produce some variable things like that. And all these structures, they they described in uh, terms of uh, biological process, uh, processes. <laughs> Excuse me. And also some short video. It's just the animation, how all these shapes was created. So you have initial formula, and then, then you will start the whole process. And it achieved these very complicated structures like this. This is the work of uh, MIT professor, uh, Intangible Media Group, Nary Oxman. And this is the way how the artists uh, see the possible ways of interacting high uh, uh, interacting of people, very complicated organisms with uh, bacteria. And so the structure that uh, could be seen previously, this is the uh, external organs, external lungs. So just in this uh, 3D printing, print, printed shapes go inserted some bacteria, uh, bacteria that produce oxygen. And so it's some, somehow mm, uh, conceptual design that allows people to breathe on, in outside the solar system. So it was just. Like just so just inject the formula and the formula grow itself. Yes, uh, but the main trick elaborate. Are it three reforms? Yes, exactly. Yes. Say that again, the last thing you uh, I'm saying that you just inject the formula yeah. and the formula itself grows in yeah. arbitrary yes. form that, you know, but now, form. Now, now designers worked on not only 
with shapes, but they mostly worked with the, the scripts, with the coding of the, some scenarios like this. So, thank you very much for attention. <laughs> uh, this is amazing. Thank you. So this is my language, a taste will be like. Спасибо.